this is very important section we are going to discuss uh, this is a part 1 chapter 5 is part 2 so this is related to cargo insurance uh, coverage so this is very very important to see different type of coverage available in the policy cargo insurance coverage part 1 will be discussing various issues related to cargo insurance coverage in part 1 and chapter 5 part 2 so let us start with the first slide rules of interpretations are very important what is called is contra performa rules so the first thing if there is ambiguity in the policy the benefit of doubts must be given to the insured because policy has been drafted by the insurance company so whenever there is a ambiguity the insurance company should suffer because the insurers are the drafters of the contract for most to so whenever there is a error in the policy you should not be punishing rt for that so for example in proposal form somebody is telling i want my Uh, policy up to dubai uh, up to uh, fob point whatever it is but by error or by mistake if you say port only uh, and then the damages are during loading now it is only up to port so who is mistake it is he has given in proposal form but the drafter has made mistake so the benefit of doubt should be given to insured phraseology use must be construed in a plain ordinary and popular sense unless the context indicates some special meaning there are naturally the insurance company is having its own act there are many as different words used but then it's it should be simple and the whatever phrases are used should have the ordinary and popular sense unless it is you know indicating some special meaning which has to be explained the rules of grammar of course it must be observed in interpretation the intent of the parties to contract must be predominant what is the interest that is again coming to the insurable interest who is having interest in the consignment the technical terms must be given strictly technical meaning not that you know you know technical terms there are many technical terms the clauses etc so that technical terms should not be you know uh, the having a different meaning or it is was person should not try to interpret it differently whatever is the actual meaning the technical meaning it is to be interpreted many times you will find on a printed policy there would be something over overridden over written uh, typing handwriting then clauses printed type in margin of the policy so it is having certain meanings you know so overridden by type right type written wording or wording impress in ink or rubber stamp it is having the you can it is having the more than the printed words hand written text precedence over typed or impressed wording the clauses printed or typed in the margin of the policy this is to be given more importance than wording within the body of the policy you will find you know policy side in the margin they, there is a uh, they will uh, give the uh, in small this thing the clauses etc so that is having more meaning uh, and this is the way how it is to be interpreted whenever there is a ambiguity whenever the clauses are attached along with the policy or what we call it it is come to the policy this is overriding both marginal clauses and clauses on the body of the policy okay these are the clauses which are attached along with the policy an express term in the policy you will find many express terms express warranties express conditions in the policy they are always overriding any implied term except when there is a inconsistency by doing so so for example you know the whenever there is a uh, implied implied term can be overwritten the 
if the popular meaning say for example the rats vermins etc so if it is mentioned in the policy rat vermins are excluded damages because of that are excluded from policy so whatever is there in the implied meaning will be overridden the clauses whatever clauses are there in the italics they will override the ordinary printed wording whenever it is inconsistent again you have to be very careful that if it is inconsistent then the italics will override clause paramount this can be removed by physical deletion otherwise this is going to override all other wordings in colors matters printed in red color do not override those printed in black so color doesn't matter held cover hold cover or held cover in marine insurance mutual obligation is implied <coughs> country craft what is country craft country craft is the mechanized sailing vessels they are flying say for example from gujarat say verawal porbandar for other than sea voyage the stamp duty is 25 paise when some insured is rupees 5000 or less it is 50 paise when some insured is over 5000 so this has got for a sea voyage it is different and for non sea voyage it is a different stamp duty altogether if it is a postal sending the stamp duty if it is involving c void it is as per scale a which is provided earlier and if it is sending it is going by rail road or air in a way in land transit then it is scale b as per the transit which is prescribed earlier basically in land transit clauses are different they were they were initially drafted by more or less it is based on the exclusions or etc everything is based on institute cargo clauses but they are slightly different in couple of uh, uh, perils etc so earlier it was drafted by tariff advisory committee the tariff the, the tac is discontinued or you can say that department is now decommissioned now the in 2009 the general insurance council have revised this clauses so more or less now they are better than earlier tsc clauses what was there so in practice the clauses for inland transportation again they are divided into a is all risk b is a name peril and c is the again name peril but the lesser risk are covered for inland transportation there has to be accident there has to be uh, rolling over and sort of things of there you know so you should know the this these are used itc institute cargo clauses a is all risk b and c institute cargo clauses c it is a named peril policy and the minimum coverage is provided in icc c what are the perils which is covered is the fire explosion stranding or grounding of a vessel craft sinking or capsizing derailment of land conveyance 
collision or contact of vessel craft or conveyance with external object other than water and discharge of cargo in port of distress these are the things which is covered only covered under the sea policy then general average sacrifice jettisoning etc is also covered under sea policy it is basically try to understand it is a named peril policy very very limited risk are covered under that liability under boat to blame collision clause for the purpose of liability it is covered general average salvage charges this is which is incurred to avoid loss of loss or any cause except those excluded the exclusion for c a or b all exclusions are same it starts from 4.1 misconduct etc so all the exclusion remain same in all the policies only thing c and b they are the named peril policy a is all risk policy try to understand it is all risk policy it is not all loss policy this is a institute cargo clauses a or popularly known as icc a the latest clauses are 2009 now this is the always policy where the perils covered are not listed in a way every peril is covered provided it is not falling in exclusions provided in the policy so th this is very peculiar liability and boat to belly uh, boat to uh, blame collision clause is there there is a general average and salvage charges incurred to avoid loss from any causes except those excluded but then here everything is covered provided it is not falling in exclusion so a participant should know about icc a b and c a is all risk b is a peril which is little more than c perils and c perils are the minimum risk which is covered under the policy and perils covered are listed institute cargo clause b is also named peril policy i have not listed out but then generally whatever is covered under the c policy is also there in this only thing the the water ingress because of sea lake etc in vessels hold there are certain additional perils listed in the policy which is covered so whenever somebody has issued a b policy basically the perils listed has to be checked the loss attributable to the peril which is covered under the policy it is then only the claim is recommended for underwriters considerations all other things like general average charges avoid loss it is covered this is uh, uh, again a named peril policy liability under boat to blame collision clause is covered now whether it is a, a b or c policy these exclusions are general in all the three policies or clauses foremost thing is will, willful misconduct of the assured so it is deliberate action of assured which is leading to loss it is a conscious decision of the assured which is leading to loss it is deliberate action of overloading of a truck it is deliberate action of you know selecting a improper vehicle etc so these are all
these are uh, important exclusions unseaworthiness of the vessel or unfitness of the craft or conveyance or container with privities of assured is excluded that means if it is not a privities the assured has not selected it and then it is the someone else either port has selected the stevedores have selected or the consigner has selected a unseaworthy vessel without privities of assured then the this exclusion is not applicable war civil war capture seizure or due to direct mines bombs or torpedoes are excluded from scope of policy the strikes raids lockouts or civil commotion terrorist or person of political motives any losses attributable to that is excluded from and of course inherent wise or nature of subject matter we already discussed there are various uh, the traits for example liquefaction spontaneous combustion evaporation clingage natural losses so these are all chaffing losses so these are all losses which is not intention is not to cover these losses under the policy after 4 5 6 7 exclusion the most important clause is clause number 8 or what we call it is a duration clause or also it is known as a transit clause so you look at this that where this clause is trying to tell you the validity of the cover from where cover starts and when cover ends you know 2009 clauses are uh, used nowadays and you should see that it is right from the removal of shell so that is the starting point Uh, earlier it was you know after loading and only it was for transit etc so this has been changed nevertheless you maintain as per what is mentioned in the book so to any other warehouse or a place of storage to consign is or other final warehouse so where where it ends you know so it should go to the designated final warehouse as per the policy or if the consignee elects to take the uh, different you know other than destination some different place for the purpose of storage the moment he takes possession of it as a uh, uh, and then if he keeps it in his storage premises other than final destination the it is over normally once it goes to bond uh, it, it remains in bond for the longer period and then the moment it goes to bond it is uh, the policy is seized over it is so storage other than in ordinary course of transit and or allocation or distribution many times xjt cargo are delivered xjt people are sending it to chennai ahmedabad or delhi so the moment you elect to use port or jt or cfs for the purpose of distribution the intention of the insurance company is not to cover the present scenario it is a sales turnover policy anywhere in india to anywhere in india and people are not strictly uh, uh, looking at the risk whether it is going to different places or not because they say that from anywhere in india to anywhere in india it is covered so it is the prerogative of the insured to send anywhere he wants to send it so this this clause nowadays strictly it is not exercised but then if you storing it for any what is ordinary course of transit the ship unloads the cargo it goes to port or cfs and then it is delivered from there after delivery it goes to final designated destination in between maybe there is a problem there is a uh, say uh, floods in the uh, area where destination is there there are some unrest or something or whatsoever different reason maybe there is a shut out of export cargo whatever is reason if the consigner is electing to keep good or the consignee is electing to uh, keep goods other than the final warehouse the marine policy will end there only now this cover remains for 60 days after unloading from the vessel 
the date of unloading 60 days it should go to final destination so if it is a 61st day and there is accident it will be beyond scope of the policy and then the delay uh, delay beyond the control of insured and any deviation force discharge and transshipments force discharge and transshipments there are no issues in that but even if there is a delay beyond control of the insured if you look at the clause the delay clause uh, the it is not covered actually the loss is attributable to delay but then delay beyond control of insured and deviation that means in transit if there is a delay okay then it is not uh, it is held cover actually it is, you cannot say it is not covered the termination of contract of carriage clause due to any any reasons any circumstances maybe it is beyond control of the assured if the contract of carriage is terminated at port or place other than the policy destination in other words we can say if the voyage is frustrated at that particular place the transit is otherwise terminated before delivery of the goods and then the insurance also automatically terminates many times the vessel because she is at peril uh, the voyage is automatically terminated and then the voyage is you can say frustrated they will terminate the voyage they will frustrate the voyage and then maybe the, the there are forwarding clauses etc so that issue is differently discussed but the voyage is frustrated the the transit is frustrated it is automatically termination of the policy now when you are terminating what what, what is what the policy indicates that if the assured takes positive action to continue the insurance he gives prompt notice to insurers and requesting in continuation of the cover you see try to understand the cover up to destination is covered but then because of certain circumstances if it is frustrated the insurance company would like to continue it the insurer will agree to continue the cover until the goods are sold because what happens port of refuse if my voyage is frustrated the freight is more than the cost of cargo the cargo is in damaged condition people will try to sell it at the place of port of refuse where the voyage is frustrated so till the time the goods are sold or delivered to such port of place then it is covered provided it is only 60 days after arrival after arrival of goods to such port or place whichever is earlier so again there is a validity period for you know how many days our policy will be on if the goods are forwarded within 60 days see there is a forwarding charges clauses is also there in the policy so if it is forwarded to destination or to any other destination until terminated in accordance with the provisions in transit clause which is provided in the policy so you have to inform insurance company and by any reason if you are going to some different destination there also insurance company should permit for that if there is a by any reason if the vessel is changing her voyage vessel is deviating from the original voyage etc
You see, there are institute war clauses. And if you look at the uh, ICC ABC policy, you will find that the war perils, the, the strike rights, this type of perils are removed. But as per institute war clauses, there is additional uh, uh, coverage is provided. And the risk and contingencies are covered by the cargo war clauses. So what happens many times, the derelict mine, if derelict mine is uh, maybe the mine is uh, drifting for 10 years, 15 years and then she is making contact uh, with the vessel and then explodes and there are issues with the vessel. Earlier it was held that it is, it is a war peril not covered under the policy. So, but then now with this institute war clauses, any losses caused by war, civil war, revaluation, rebellion, insurrection, civil strife, capture, seizure, restraint or detainment, all these things are covered actually. But of course, the, you know, the paramount thing is that vessels venture is legal. It should not be an illegal venture in the process. So derelict or you can say abandoned or drifting mines, torpedoes, bombs, there are limpet bombs or you know, which, which is magnetically will attach with the mice still. So all these derelict weapons of the war, if it is causing problems, damages, it is covered under institute war clauses. Now general average and salvage. What is general average? That when the entire venture is at problem, the risk is of cargo, the risk is for the vessel itself. The maybe risk is for the diesel provided by the charters. So all these things, uh, whenever the loss is there, then it is con everybody will contribute towards the loss because the vessel owner is trying to save the venture. If somebody's cargo will be sacrificed. There will be additional expenses incurred. So this is dealt in general average. Particular average is losses attributed to particular atom only, the particular extent only. So that is a particular average, the particular damage you can say. So these are covered under the policy. Under duty of assured clause, charges reasonable incurred to avert or minimize the insured loss. See, it is a what what is a reasonably incurred and reasonable expenses are covered. Not the you know heavy expenses. So whatever is the going on prices will have to be considered. Uh, so uh, there is a duty of assured clause. You know, you should try to minimize the loss. You should try to avert the loss. You, uh, so, uh, this, this duty, if it is not performed, there is a scope of, you know, repudiation of the policy, uh, the claim. Institute war clauses are also having exclusion in line with clauses A, B, C. Exclusions are there. The misconduct of the assured will not be covered. The inherent nature of cargo will not be covered. The attributable to uh, the packaging, bad packaging, not covered. Ordinary reduction in weight and volume will not be covered. So this will this will remain, exclusion will remain. What is additional exclusion provided in the war clause? The insurance shall not cover any claim based upon loss or frustration of the voyage or adventure. So if the venture is frustrated, then automatically there is a uh, the, the seizure of policy, the, the policy would terminate. Duration clause for the institute war clauses are restricted. They are not like ABC clauses. See the war risk is covered only in sea or ocean passage. In inland journey, the war clauses are not covered. That means if somebody is sending a consignment where war is going on, during sea passage, it is expected that there may not be any problem to the merchant vessel. But during land journey, if there is a torpedoing or there is a rockets, etc. fired on the truck, this is not intention is not to cover because then you are, it is expected you are not to go in that particular place. And if you are going, maybe you are, it is the additional commercial uh, considerations, the insurance policy will not support that, that type of considerations. The cover attaches from loading 
of the vessel and after unloading of the vessel it will terminate automatically this is again the the duration this war cover at destination when the unloading is delayed there is every possibility the vessel remains at anchorage the vessel is not unloading cargo properly maybe berths are not available so this war cover is limited to 15 days counting from midnight so that means my vessel arrives at bombay remains at anchorage for 15 days but she is not unloading cargo the the policy will automatically terminate after 15 days of arrival of the vessel to that particular designated port the war cover is limited to 15 days counting from arrival to transshipment port midnight of arrival for again even if it is transship and if it remains at transshipment port it is the vessel arrival for 15 days is only covered it is not the you know unlimited cover provided in this uh, particular uh, under institute war clauses there are certain if the 15 days limits expires before the goods are loaded on carrying vessel the cover is suspended after 15 days but suppose the another vessel is loaded within 15 days uh, then it is automatically you know reattaches the extension during transshipment applies only while goods remain in port or port area that means transshipment is permitted provided it is in the port area only if it is outside taken outside kept it outside then it is not covered thus this relaxation of warehouse clause is allowed while the goods are being transshipped at the intermediate port many times the cargo is not coming directly maybe at colombo at singapore at hong kong these are the place of transshipments so this transshipments is permitted otherwise also so even in war clauses uh it is you know the, the transshipments are permitted considered in the particular days this is subject to restrictions for both in location and time you see the area of operation area etc will be specified in the policy during war clauses any a hostile country 99% insurance companies will restrict the coverage even during transit it is not that full cover is extended the it will remain in transit to embrace the risk of mines and derelict torpedoes only whenever floating or submerged there will be mines led in the port area so if any losses attributable to the mines etc will be covered under the policy but then somebody is firing a rockets somebody is firing a missiles on the vessel the intention is not to cover such losses because we are not expected to go to hostile country like this the cover is limited to 60 days after discharge unless period is extended by the underwriters so this is something about the cover in institute war clauses if contract of carriage gets terminated and goods are discharged short of destination the goods then the automatically there is a termination okay short of destination means it is not going to final destination but somewhere it is diverted or you know it is uh, unloaded and it is kept in there only the goods may be sold locally or forwarded by some other means to destination named in the policy that means if there is a frustration of voyage there is a possibility of sending goods to final destination with alternate uh, means or alternate destination after information to insurance company if if goods are disposed locally that is on salvage loss basis port discharge treated as destination port cover automatically ceases upon discharge or 15 days from arrival of the ship that case may be even if she remains at anchorage for 15 days the way the it is automatic termination of the policy in war clauses after unloading from the port of refuge or a place of distress or the frustration of voyage when goods are forwarded to original dis- destination by another ship the war cover will continue and or is suspended and reattaches at the place of transshipment it will reattach when the another ship is loaded she starts journey 
the cover ceases upon discharge or 15 days from arrival of ship if goods are not discharged. This, are, this was already discussed by us earlier also. If you see SUC A policy or B policy or C policy, the war, SR, the war and the strikes and civil commotion etc. is excluded. But then it is added as a you know, strike clauses, institute war clauses. You can take separate uh, by you know, payment of premium. What is coverage? Loss and damages by strikes, locks out, workmen or person taking labor disturbances, rights and civil commotions and terrorist or any other person acting for political motive. General average and salvage charges incurred to avoid loss from risk covered. General average we have already discussed. Under duty of assured clause, ch charges reasonably and proportionately incurred to avert or minimization, minimize the loss and to preserve the uh, recovery. This, these are under sue and labor, person can claim from the insurance company. More or less, the, the losses, this is the peril which is covered. It is a, it is a peril with civil commotion, rights, etc. And then any damages, physical damages, arsoning, burning, things would be covered under the policy. Duration of cover, that is identical to ICCA policy, there are no changes from that. So after termination of contract of carriage, change of voyage, these are reproduced in the strikes clause also. Warehouse to warehouse with customary 60 days time limit after discharge. Try to understand when, when we say warehouse to warehouse, in, in transit in totality, you have to see the terms of sale, where titles of goods are changed and where policy is attached. Okay. So duration, as I said, that it is same as per transit clause A, B and C, there are no changes in that. Basically from this particular strike clauses, the exclusions are same, there is no change in the exclusion A, B, C. What is the added exclusion? That any losses or damages, expense, damages and the expenses arising from absence of labor, shortage of labor or withholding of labor. You see, that means, first thing you tell me that if, if there is an absence of labor, why cargo will get damaged if it is, an, uh, it is not having any ambulation, it is stationary in the warehouse? In transit? Of course, in transit. See, it has to be a inherent nature problem. Because of inherent nature problem, during duration, it is every likely that it will get damaged because of absence of labor, etc. Okay. So after frustration, when the voyage is frustrated, the forwarding charges are not covered under the strike clauses. Institute cargo clauses air. So whenever the consignment is coming by air, there is a air clauses which are attached. It is also institute, it is same as per transit clause in ICC A. It does not cover general average. There is no, because in air you have never seen general average. There is, there cannot be any additional expenses. There cannot be any uh, peril to the uh, aircraft and aircraft is incurring any additional expenses. Nothing can happen of that nature. So there is no general average concept in air clauses. So under duty of assured clause, all the policies there is a clause, duty of assured. The charges reasonably and properly incurred to avert or minimize the, the loss and the preserve the property, it is covered under the policy that is everywhere, you know, that there is the, the total loss is unavoidable. But if you are incurring certain expenses of segregation and maybe a short of destination, you incur certain expenses to minimize the loss, maybe a aversion of further losses, etc. The expenses are covered, otherwise insurance company is aware that, so this is the incentive given to uh, the consignees or the insured, that you try to, you, you spend your money to minimize the loss, because otherwise end of day, insurance company is going to pay for the full losses. In this, forwarding charges are covered, which are in nature of sue and labor only. 99% the, the air cargo with the peril or something, 
there is no question of any frustration of void because they have transshipment points. So they will have to reach to some transshipment point from there. The cargo will be forwarded to final destination. There are no serious issues. You, I have not seen any void frustrated in my lifetime. I am in this line for maybe 40 years. But uh, I have not seen uh, any frustration of air void, etc. These are, there are certain theoretical things one person must know. In air clauses, the exclusion are same as per ICC A, B, C. There is no difference in that. So if losses attributable to misconduct, losses attributable to fair wear ordinary reduction in weight and volume, losses attributable to inadequacy of packaging, losses attributable to the inherent nature, losses attributable to delay, all these things are not covered under even in air policy. So whatever exclusions they prevail in a policy, ICCA, that is also prevailing in air clauses. In duration of cover, it is also same like institute cargo clauses A, where it will attach, where the risk is attaching and where risk is terminating. More or less everything is same. If you are using airport for the distribution, it will stop automatically or to, it, if it is going to various places. Short of destination, from airport, if it, instead of going to uh, final destination warehouse, if it is taken to some other warehouse, maybe even in bonded warehouse, technically, now it is not in ordinary course of transit, the cover will automatically cease. Only thing, the time limit after unloading at the airport, 30 days are covered right up to, within 30 days, it should reach final destination. If there is any delay, maybe insurance company, you can request them to get extension of the cover. Remaining clauses more or less, they are same like ICCA, in there is no serious difference between, as I said, there is no general average because there cannot be any general average in air transit. There are institute war clauses for air cargo. It is identical to marine cargo war clauses. Instead of waterborne clause, now it is replaced to air transit. Identical to clause 1 of marine cargo war clause. General average and salvage is not there. It is omitted from this clause. Same exclusions as per marine cargo war clauses. The duration is same as per marine cargo war clauses. Subject to prompt notice and payment of additional premium. These are things which is the features of, you can say, similarity of the air cargo with the war clauses air cargo with war clauses marine cargo. Strike clauses air cargo also it is same like war clauses. So risk covered is same as per marine cargo strike clauses. The exclusions are also same as per marine cargo strike clauses. The identical to warehouse to warehouse concepts. The validity period is 30 days after discharge. So there are certain changes, but more or less, there is no serious difference in the clauses uh, or the uh, sections in each uh, clause. The cargo can also be sent by postal sending, you know, registered mail. Uh, many times earlier, uh, small consignment, diamonds, etc., they were, they were being sent by postal sendings. So this is covering all the risk of physical loss or damage to the subject matter, except as provided in the exclusion. So this is a always policy, but then it is also based on the exclusions provided in the policy. The insured against actual total loss of the parcel except as provided in the exclusion. The duration is from deposition or registration at post office it continues until the, 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 the goods are delivered to the final destination or the final consignee or the recipient. The goods are warranties are goods are also insured by postal authority for maximum amount as per prevailing postal regulation per sending limit or the recovery liabilities etc. Considering that the insurance company uh, they are also selecting they are also insuring the cargo. Claims 
in the form of affidavit must be immediate. Say, when I am not getting a consignment, I am not getting a cargo, what you should do? You file an affidavit immediately against the postal authority. You submit it. You have to give immediate notice of claim to the insurance company also. Okay, we have not received it. So, post office receipt is required as a proof of non-delivery. No claim is admitted for problems related to address. If there is a wrong address, then if, if, if it is proved that address was wrong and it could not be delivered, the parcel could not. You see, this was happening. I have seen, you will not, you, you, you may not be aware that there was a 3 crore rupees claim, a consignment of floppies, you know, uh, he said that this is a, uh, the, uh, what you call media or it is a software, I am sending it to Singapore. This gentleman, he was, you, you know what is the cost of floppies. Nowadays that floppy disk are, I do not know the young people, they, are, they have seen this floppy disk. So floppies were sent. Address was put wrong. Instead of Singapore proper address, they have written somewhere Bangkok. It was misplaced. And then claim was lodged with insurance company. So anything which is related to address, the insurance company will not entertain the claim. The shortage from the seal intact parcel, it is also not covered under the policy. You see, basically you are weighing the, weighing the parcel. Receipt also, if, if you feel there is some uh, vacation or alleging etc. You can always wait and then give a uh, proper notice to the postal service. But if the seals are in intact condition, any shortage from seal intact parcel is not covered under the policy. There are many clauses and warranties they are attached considering the nature of cargo. Considering and then these warranties are forming part of the insurance policy, which is a express, we can say it is a express warranties in the policy. So foremost thing is institute replacement clause. You see, earlier what was happening that if suppose some part of machinery is damaged, the people used to reject the entire machinery. Now they, they, even it cannot be assessed on sound market value or damaged market value. So, loss to any part of machinery or equipments caused by peril insured against the institute replacement clause is very effective for adjusting and adjusting the loss of machinery damages. Some recoverable is cost of repairing with forwarding cost. So, that means it has to be repaired. You cannot reject it because say one motor, the full unit, there is one motor. Motor is damaged. Motor can be replaced. You cannot reject the entire consignment or entire machinery on the basis that the motor is in damaged condition. Of course, some insured in any policy, in a way, some insured, it is a limiting factor. Of course, there are various different rules for sewer labor expenses incurred to minimize loss and then there is a total loss that is going to be different. It, it, it will be looked in different. Duty is payable after out of charge and if it is insured. So, the, the, the excise, the custom duty what you are paying. So, for example, a consignment of machinery is unloaded and then I have paid duty also on that. At the time of clearance, if there are losses, the duty will not get, I will not get remission on duty. So, that duty is also covered provided it is insured under the policy. Now, many times people will import a machinery which is in use condition. Many, many uh, uh, Korean uh, looms, they were being ex imported in India. There are a lot of second-hand machinery, heavy machinery for the steel industries, etc. has been imported. So, when the second-hand
pair and set clause many times the atoms are imported in pairs it is in two parts so for example classic example is shoes shoes are in you know it is in pair so if one shoe is damaged in that you cannot reject the entire both the shoes so it is a pair and set clause the liability is restricted to particular parts only maybe it is a uh, Uh, garments uh, or a suits which is having trouser also and jacket also so if trouser is damaged you cannot reject the jacket also along with that so this is the if it is a pair and set if it is something is damaged in one particular uh, uh, thing uh, you cannot reject the other part so without reference to any special value with such articles may have as parts of such pair or set Nor more than proportionate part to the insured value of the pair. But how you are going to settle a shoe? It's in two parts. The one is having say hundred rupees, and then if one is damaged, you cannot claim hundred rupees. But then the surveyor should consider only fifty rupees. That is the cost of one atom which is in damaged condition. People are giving you know cutting clause. Classic example of cotton. So if cotton is having cottons are pressed bills so whenever there is a fire in this cotton maybe spontaneous combustion or whatever reason whether it is covered not covered but then the damages are only it is to external purpose external side so it is expected that you will remove the upper portion and whatever is inner side which is in good condition that that will be used as a cutting cloth there were earlier some fixed percentage were also given for that but then it is warranted that damaged portion should be cut off and balance to be utilized you cannot reject it because some part is in damaged condition for that so without reference to any special value which such articles may have parts pair or set nor more than proportionate again it is more or less it is same even if it is in the whatever is the value you have to consider the value uh, in the cutting clause also considering how much is saved and how much is cut off as a sound and how much is in damaged condition you can work out the value considering the total value of that consignment yes this is very simple it is warranted that the damaged portion should be cut off and balanced to be utilized you cannot reject the consignment because partial it is damaged you have to cut it off use it and i have given the classic example is of cotton bales See many time what happens when the cargo is in damaged condition externally, nothing is damaged. Only labels or the the sticker which is there on top of the box or cans, it is in damaged condition. So the insured, maybe a merchant, he is trying to tell that the label is in damaged condition. I cannot sell this item. So it is a rejected total and it will it will, it should be uh, sold as a salvage, reduced value. That is not acceptable. so it is most commonly use of label clause limits the liability of repackaging of the affected goods what will say you repackage it you get another carton say another labels and then put this sound in new thing make it like new so that is the requirement as per the label uh, label clause various atoms they have brand on that or it is a brand value Say for example, it is a uh, tea, Tata tea, or you can say that Lux soap. So if the Lux soap is in damaged condition, if you attempt to sell it in the market as a salvage, the brand may get tarnished. It will go to the personal. If he is selling it to the common public, he will say, "Look, Lux is not in good condition. Uh, Lux is not a good soap. They are, they are the uh, the." Uh, the manufacturers are cheating so that is the reason they take a brand and trademark clause in that you cannot sell this atom after damage damage as a salvage in the market maybe certain percentage of salvage loss has been negotiated with the insured itself because he is also protecting his brand 
so what what is what is happening with the brand and trade clause which is given to the products which is having a brand value it prevents damages to cargo being sold in salvage market because in salvage market you know it is a second hand market grey market also many times so we are we are stopping that one it is it saves insurers brand name because it is not going in this spurious hands it may be sold as a salvage after removing brand labels yes many times what happen that if, if it is possible to remove label but if it is a soap lux soap even inside that lux name is you can say embedded so which is very difficult but if external selling say for example if it is a tata tea which is in damaged condition we will say you put this tea open it put it in bag and sell it as a tea and so the brand is not affected and then uh, the tata's brand will not be affected it is going as a loose tea so the person who is purchasing loose tea if he is selling it as a loose he cannot sell it as a tata tea or the uh, something like that concealed damage clause see basically many project cargoes or couple of items once it is reaching destination you cannot open it immediately and put it for you so project cargo it requires there is a gestation period it takes time so the the boxes will be either kept in open or in the shed so if they open the boxes up to 6 months and if they found damages inside then this is covered under the concealed damage the damage is there but then under any circumstances it has to be a marine damage, marine cargo transit damage if it is proved it is attributable to improper packaging or inherent nature of cargo or there is a poor workmanship and it is a specification problem then this clause will not be operative they may give some time period 30 days 60 days 90 days so you can open it and if damages are there and if it can be proved you know logically that the damages are attributable to transit then it is covered under the policy you cannot say that you have received it in sound condition and now this clause will not be uh, operative that uh, means now uh, if you have, you have received in sound condition and you cannot put up a claim with the insurance company in case of receipt of damaged packages it is necessary to open package immediately so there are two types of consignment what i am receiving either it is a damaged one i have to open it immediately if it is sound then there is a concealed damage clause will be operative maybe again uh, it is a project cargo if it is damage or you can say it is a constructive total loss or it is a in a way uh, rejected the consignment and then it is expected that the debris must be removed so in the project insurance they will provide certain percentage towards removal of debris because there could be any peril operating if it is a fire something is uh, you know remain to ashes etc even the the destruction of that items we can say the removal of the debris is also expensive so to certain percentage it is covered otherwise once it is in totally damaged condition the the destruction cost is not covered in a way under the policy in normal policy see cotton wool and similar fibers cargoes may be shipped in belts which expose the outer part of each belt to the risk of damage the belts are usually large so overall the damage when restricted to outer part of the belt it is superficial thus by picking out the damaged fibers the remainder of the belt is saleable as a sound cargo when number of belts are so damaged the sound parts may be re rebuilt to make a whole belts the fibers picked out as damage are called pickings and provided the loss was caused by an insured peril the insured is liable for the charges you know whatever the charges are given uh, are paid so this is the picking clause allows for you know 
you can say segregation of damage but 99 percent this word is used for fibrous material like cotton and wool the classification clause is also very very important clause because the vessels they are built under classification society rules and regulations are considered they are physically in good condition for a seaworthy vessel physically she should be in good condition she should be manned also properly she should be having proper supplies diesel fresh water food supply etc in all the respect she should be in worthy condition so that is the seaworthy vessel the classification societies are inspection agencies and for mechanically self propelled vessels of steel construction this classification clause is incorporated in the policy the classification society must be a member of ics what is ics international association of classification societies this is not complied over is available with additional premium or held cover basis this is see basically many times it is held cover but then if it is if it is somebody is telling that it is the class should be ics and if you don't have ics class there is every possibility that the insurance company can repudiate your claim because it is a breach of condition it is a breach of warranty which they have incorporated in the policy the age criteria is also very very important of course this is not very strictly followed in indian market indian insurance companies are not following this but then many international uh, ports you will find that age criteria for bulk or combination carrier it is 10 years liner vessel it is allowed 25 years of age containerized liner vessel is 30 years and other vessels 15 years what is liner and tramp liner is which is moving on a which is uh, the voyages are on a fixed schedules and fixed ports with a fixed timings etc so age is very important as i said that this is not strictly followed but nevertheless you should know this it is it is in the book there could be question and you should be giving these answers only otherwise uh, uh, around 25 years people have no serious uh, problems about the vessel vessels are also you know uh, because of the imb rules and regulation the manning the classification society uh, when the maintenance is good the 25 years is okay the imb has accepted age of vessel as a 25 years the vessel criteria do not apply to craft involved in sub supplementary operations of course this is for the cargo policy i am not discussing much on the hull part of it but then this classification is otherwise given for the the vessel which is carrying cargo under cargo policy also in hull and machinery policy sea going or ocean going not for inland vessels they are they are uh, as per the solas act they are supposed to have classification who is a member of international association there are 13 classes they are member of ics popularly this is known as ISM warranty, inter international safety management. So, international safety management for the vessel, it ensures there is a standard operating procedures for everything, and it is expected that it is drafted by the senior senior management from the uh, organization, and it is complied with complied with. The safety manager could be classification society at times, so it is compulsory ISM. is compulsory for the vessels about 500 gt it is gross tonnage gross tonnage is not weight of the vessel but it is the gross volume of the vessel which is total it is not an nt is a net tonnage is volume available for carriage of cargo the vessel should comply with icm code it is a warranty incorporated either in hull policy or even in cargo policy that vessel is carrying the cargo should have classification should comply with the icm uh, warranty if consignor and his agents have privities of non compliance of the cover then it do not, then again the pro, the problem is the privities but nowadays you just name the vessel you go to the site like equasis 
you can find out what is the class, what is the age, who is ISM manager. It is not a difficult thing. So there is no question of non privities Whenever I am asking my supplier, when I am purchasing certain goods, I will ask supplier to have vessel which is having uh, flag which is not it is not a flag of convenience. Then the age is not overage. The classification is uh, ISCS member and uh, it is having complying with the ISM warranty, etc. So the exclusion does not apply to buyer of the cargo. In good faith, he was not aware of the non-compliance. Uh, this this is this is the theoretical condition, but 99 percent, the people are aware of you know the vessels condition etc. Earlier insurance company when the GIC the four corporates under GIC they used to give a vessels approval. So the financial condition of vessel owner all the details were checked by this vessel approval of, at the time of import etc. This is discontinued. But it is always good to have three things you try to understand. The vessel should have a classification with ICS. The age should not be, say, let us say, uh, not more than 25 years. And then uh, it should have ISM warranty. Uh, it should not have flag of convenience. So when all these things are there, the chances of losses are much less. Basically, this clause is trying to say that loading in the vessel is covered, unloading from the vessel is covered. So in an import policy, the unloading is covered. There is no issue in that. But even in factory premises, they say that once it is unloaded from the truck and place it on ground, uh, the policy terminates. It is not 100% free. Because our duration clause suggests it should go to is the designated place in the warehouse. It's a nominated place in the warehouse. Similarly, loading when the loading is covered, normally what happens at the time of loading, if there are any losses and if the insurance is in uh, India, so the terms of sale is FOB. After loading, uh, the titles of goods are changed. But try to understand the policy will attach as per rule of construction of policy, rule number two, when ship moves out. Now you see, when, when I say that after moving out only when the risk is attaching, then the question comes that during loading, if there are losses, who is responsible? So to take care of it, this is incorporated in the policy, loading and unloading losses are also covered. Thank you very much. It is the end of cargo insurance coverage part one. What we have seen is the rules of interpretation, institute cargo clauses A, B and C, miscellaneous institute clauses, incidental clauses and warranties. Thank you very much. This is the end of session.